Hello, my name is Plague Player, and today I'll be counting down my top 5 favourite Call of Duty games ever. There might be a satchel of subjectivity included with this video, so if your favourites differ from mine, let me know in the comments. It's important to highlight the multiplayer focus of this video. Single player makes me feel lonely. Coming in at number 5 is Black Ops. Black Ops was the first Call of Duty to offer split-screen online multiplayer, and that's the main reason why it's on this list. This feature really is vital for those of us who love the game side by side with friends, siblings or grandparents. This feature set the standard for subsequent games and I'm very happy to see the trend continue. Personally, I feel like the guns in this game feel, look and sound like toys, especially when compared with the more lifelike Infinity Ward models. But you know what? Sometimes toys can be fun. I feel that interesting items like the crossbow and motion sensor were a refreshing directional change for the series, and this creative itemization had a positive impact in subsequent games. Wager matches added another fun dimension to the game. The whole betting COD cash or whatever it was called was a bit of a joke, but the game modes themselves were a lot of fun and provided a change in pace from the regular multiplayer. An important shout out has got to go to the zombies mode. Disregarding DLC, Kino Der Toten is hands down the best zombies map so far. Fun items, wager matches and the introduction of the couch co-op split screen multiplayer standard wins Blops a well deserved 5th place. Next up in 4th place is Black Ops 2. If this list was based purely in class creation, Blops 2 would come in at number 1. The pick 10 system allowed for the most creativity when building a loadout. If you didn't want a secondary, a piece of equipment or even a primary, you could go without and spend those precious points elsewhere. The wild card option kept things balanced and allowed for some interesting loadouts. For the first time in a Treyarch game, I felt that the guns actually felt good, and building on the creativity of Black Ops, the weapon and equipment selection was eclectic and interesting. Pretty much since release, Blops 2 should have been called Nuketown or Hijacked of Duty. This might have been a problem if you didn't like these maps, but I loved them and the fast paced mayhem they brought. I put Call of Duty 4, Modern Warfare in 3rd position. When I was replaying through these games to get some footage for this video, COD 4 sucked me in and spat me out a day of solid play later. The community was great, I've never heard so many remarks of good game. There's something nice about being able to congratulate a particularly skilled enemy shot, opposed to hurling abuse. This is what a Call of Duty game should be. I find I lost a lot of the games I played, but you know what, I had a great time. I think that's the mark of a true great Call of Duty game, enjoyment in the face of defeat. Call of Duty isn't about being the best, you're doing it wrong if you're always playing worse players than yourself. You can only get better by playing those better. Even when getting crushed, I relish the feeling of making the victors work for the win. COD 4 introduced the revolutionary Create a Class system and prestige levelling. The Create a Class system popularised the RPG addictiveness of building a unique character. Looking back, the system was a little limited, i.e. everyone running stopping power or juggernaut, but it worked well and still holds up today. Getting experience and levelling gave a true sense of progression. The enjoyment of play was constantly reinforced by new gun unlocks and the thought of getting another symbol to show your dedication. In my opinion, COD 4 had the best maps of any COD game, Bog and Block being my favourites. On to second position. I may be looking at Call of Duty 2 through nostalgia tinted glasses, but that in no way undermines the quality of the game. COD 2 was my first Call of Duty game and it was my first multiplayer FPS as well. It hooked me in the series and genre. The guns in this game are perfection. Each side is a different selection, all with their own highly differentiated strengths, weaknesses and feel. Some of my favourites being the American M1 Grand, the German Car 98K and of course the British Thompson. The game allows players to choose their side instead of forced random allocation, resulting in comical 6 Russian versus 2 German situations. The first few minutes of these matches are always taken up with confused side swapping and persuasive mic talk cajoling people to swap stripes. All game modes allow a maximum of 8 players total. This resulted in giving the game a personal touch. When Big Jim 2K13 killed you in COD 2, you remembered his name and relished the thought of revenge. When people kill me in subsequent CODs, I barely even register that they have names, giving a more detached feel. When I played the game yesterday, finding a full game was nearly impossible, but I spent most of the day with only 3 other strangers and had a blast.
The maps in COD 2 were perfect. Bonus ones were even given away for free. Can you believe it? Infinity Ward giving stuff away for free? The gameplay was flawless and it set the Call of Duty bar very high. And last but not least, in my number one slot is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Imagine COD 4 on a cocktail of fun, adrenaline and a little bit of craziness. Modern Warfare 2 took Call of Duty 4 and cranked it up to 11. The create a class system allowed for some insane loadouts. One man army noob tubers, viable speedy knifers and dual shotgun dominators to name a few. Every weapon felt great and it was just such a fun, fast paced way to spend time. I'll admit that the game was too killstreak focused, but the ability to pick and choose your killstreak blew my mind at the time. They shouldn't have been as powerful, but the diversity and choice was admirable. That's enough of me for one day, I hope you enjoyed the video. Why not whack your top 5 in the comments?